Hey guys, welcome back. So today on Modern Masters Auto, I have a surprise for you. But before then, let's go ahead and show you this. We have a new office starting up there, and that is where Rachel's gonna be, and we are hiring a quick lane service trader for down here, so if you're looking for a service trader position, we can help you out. But look what I have here, guys. Look at this Raptor Swap F-150 that we built years ago. He set up the camping setup, very cool. And look who it is. What up? This is Philip Latai from Victory Road Performance, and he stopped by to visit right yeah just visit just visit and i think we're gonna do a little maintenance on the truck yeah i got some maintenance parts and some fuel economy upgrades so uh yeah nothing fuel too crazy. economy upgrades yeah nothing on, too a, on crazy. a truck with 37s on it are they 37s 35s 35s they look huge on that thing look at this let's give you the grand tour of this thing we built this truck years ago Full Raptor differentials, full Raptor control arms. It's plus four wide more than a Raptor? Five. Plus five wider than a real Raptor. And it is just a beast. So what me and Phil were talking about years ago, we were like, man, I really like the Raptor, but it would be cooler if it had the Coyote engine. So Phil being him, you know, who he is with modifying everything, bought a traditional F-150 and then this full crazy Raptor thing and every Raptor component, upgraded suspension. I mean, what, what all did we do this thing, Phil? I don't even remember. So, well, first I hit a deer on the way here. Oh, show, show yeah. me no, is, is that deer all on the side? Yes, it is. Look at, the, what the, it's you didn't wash it? In memory. You, you couldn't wash it before you brought no, it? No, no, that, that was, uh, that happened in Nebraska. So that is Nebraska deer ladies and gentlemen and i can imagine that if you live in nebraska that happens often to you as well so it hit right here and it bent this back i fixed this yesterday with the tractor broke this oh, look at this yep damaged all this broke the headlight clip and then messed up the alignment like threw it way out so the inside of the tires wearing like crazy oh that's, wow i got new tires you're gonna put those oh, on that's a maintenance item broke my fiberglass fender so don't know how i'm gonna fix that and then the door got a pretty pretty good yeah, ding in it too you, can, you really can't see the dent too well. The deer is hiding it pretty good. You might want to leave that. That's why it's there. Yeah. Yep. It's camouflage. <laughs> but, and when I have the passenger door open, I get a nice smell of, of a field. And it's like a, a earthy. Yeah, real uh, earthy. real gamey smell in the F-150 now. Yeah, it's, pr it's pretty nice. It's a feature. And check out this aftermarket truck tower with I all got this badass suspension. New upper control arms since the alignment's messed up. We'll have to do that anyway, so I figured we might as well swap them. And then uh, some drilled and slotted rotors. Oh, nice. And, I love these uh, wheels. And some fuel economy parts. Well, I'm not too excited to see what his fuel economy parts are, but I will tell you this. It feels like the one years ago when we did the suspension, he's like, oh, it's just bolt in, all this stuff. That aftermarket shock tower we had to cut the old one out, drill in all the holes, modify the frame for that to work. And Phil, of course, was like when he dropped it off, oh man, it's okay. It's all bolt in, drop right in. No, 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 no. I had to cut the damn thing up. But so your, his fuel economy parts, I'm praying to Jesus, Phil, that it is nothing like that. Hey. No surprises. It, fuel economy, that, that's all it is. All right, this Raptor does look like it could use some fuel economy things with the, the big load in the back. and ready to hit the trails. I love this thing, I love the color. They did not make a Raptor in this color either. This is awesome. Welcome back guys, today Rusty is sweeping the floor. Looking good, Russell, looking good. Nice even strokes. But today is the day you guys have been waiting for. We are doing the unboxing of Phil's maintenance parts. So you wanna do that, but with wearing your legit street cars sunglasses. And let's see what we got. We got. Uh, Are you opening it or am I opening? You can open. There oh, you, you go. You can open. It's kind of yours. I'll so. describe it and you open. Okay. This is a package from me, shipped to me. It says Philip Latai, Modern Masters. Whoa! Wow! What Look the at hell that. Merry is Christmas. this? We got a cooler of some type. This is a new trans cooler. That is a new trans cooler. Okay. Ooh. Look at that. Mishimoto trans cooler. Looking awesome. Package number two. Ticket. Not sure number. who it's from. Maybe it could be from Mishimoto. Mishimoto, let's see what else they make. This looks like a really awesome coolant reservoir. Look at that. 
giant coolant reservoir. You're gonna leave it in the plastic? You, you want me to take it out of the plastic? I gotta get do to the, see what it looks like. I gotta do the whole thing. The whole thing. Whole thing. All right. Ooh, look at the sight glass. Man, I gotta say, I always feel like their stuff is expensive, but it does look very quality. Wow, that's nice. Right. Another package, not from Mishimoto, and it is most likely YouTube Mishimoto. We're doing not YouTube too. a silicon hose kit. All right, we're not opening that up. Silicon hose kit, everybody. From concept to completion, Mishimoto silicon hose kit. Not that. What the? Oh, there you go. Giant Mishimoto box. Also from Mishimoto. This is the. Yep, it's a radiator. Pull that bad boy out you of there. You want to pull the whole thing out? how much space we're going to save by getting rid of this box. The radiator's this big in an F-150. So look at this giant rad. Bigger than your little baby truck's radiator. My baby truck? I'm pretty sure my radiator is like the size of your entire truck. All right, looks like we've got a bunch of OEM stuff. That is a brand new water pump. Brand new cam phasers. Those are the exhaust like. ones. You said the intake ones are arriving to their, their, today at your parents' yeah. house, so that's that's good, not too far away. Nice, look at that. Look at this stamped Ford. We are making coyotes great again. For this, this sure. is, these are factory truck phasers, because there's no, you can't use the upgraded ones, or the updated here, we'll put these. Oh, you, why not? Did they say why? Um, like there's a, just not one that fits, I guess. Or the truck like exhaust gasket, ones are already good. A bunch of gaskets. Bunch of gaskets in here. Boring, boring gaskets. Corsa performance sticker. Boom, putting that on my truck. Boundary pumps. Is this a Billet Coyote oil pump? God damn it, maintenance fill? Billet crankshaft timing sprocket. Damn. It's tiny. This oh, is catch a can? catch can. Catch can kit. Injectors. Did I get 1050s? I think I got 1050s. 1050s. Injector Dynamics 1050s. Shout Ooh. out to them. Them guys are awesome. When in doubt, get 1050s. Not really a maintenance thing for the injectors, but it's a little... Uh, no, no. A little my little... injectors are seven years old at this point, and they need to be replaced. ARP hardware? ARP had hardware for the phasers. Oh yeah, cam phaser bolt. Nice, there's the part number. Very cool. There you go. Racing, this is the new oil pump. New boundary racing oil pump. And this one's good for the truck? Yes, that is a Mustang oil pump. Boundary racing, nice, nice, nice. Everybody knows the, the oil pump gears and the coyotes can go bad, this eliminates that. So you upgrade the pump to the Mustang pump. It increases the oil pressure. Nice. So that's a Mustang pump. Ooh, Got some spark some of our plugs. NGK Iridium plugs. Part number. Boom. Pretty sure that's a boost part number. You playing on running nitrous? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Got this box right here. That, Those aren't supposed to ship. That is here. Pokemon cards. That is. A full fossil edition Pokemon set. Oh man, that's. Is this supposed to go to the game store? No, no, no. Hold yeah, on one these... second. One second. One second. Look at this, guys. Look at this. While I have this here, even though I'm not supposed to have this, let's do a huge shout out. Check out Hidden Table Games in Eagle, Colorado, so you can get cool stuff like this Pokemon cards, board games, anything. You want to do a little shout out for them, guys? <laughs> they don't really sell stuff online. No, but if they're ever in Colorado, it's cool to see it is that a cool the spot. owner of VRP also owns a very cool and personable card game store where you can see him. It's a tiny little shop. His great, it's not that tiny. If you're in Breckenridge, Vail, Beaver Creek, and you happen to be into nerd stuff like we are, then the game store is a pretty cool spot to check out. Hidden Table Games, they even have card nights, they even have Pokemon battling nights, all kinds of good stuff. Man, look at some of these cards. Hunter Gengar. Wow. Yeah. That's where it's That's at. a full fossil set. Every single card. Must be nice to be rich. They're not first edition though, so no, nothing crazy. <laughs> nothing too crazy. Nothing just, too just crazy. Just mildly crazy. Hidden table games though, guys. Eagle, Colorado. It's a very cool spot. Now back to more Ford performance parts. Let's see what's in this box. 
high strength VVT solenoids. So these are better than the, the regular truck solenoids. Yeah, it'll only use two of them in the Gen 2 Coyote, as far as I know. I don't, I, I got really- got four. Yeah, yeah, so it, they, it comes as four. Oh, but we're only gonna use two. Just using two. Okay, cool. Well, that's good, so if one goes bad. Oh, what's in this one? I don't know. Bolst timing chain tensioner set. So this is, this is a upgrade. Yeah, that's an upgrade. Some people think these Bolst Coyotes are so fast. So everything is an upgrade that I got except for the exhaust phasers. So it's a new chain, the tensioners, the solenoids. And these are a huge upgrade. So there is like stages of, of forward tensioners for the Coyote and the truck being the worst. It is junk. The GTs are a little bit better and then the Bolst is your best forward. It's the Bolst time exchange tensioner so excited to upgrade this put all this on all kinds of stuff no timing chain though that's here is that in that box yes i don't see the other chain though unless this is there's two chains right yeah primary and secondary yeah. is that what this is i have two yes it is chains one for the x and one for the next actually this might be left and right um, oh it says you, primary you might need unless it only has two there's only two in the cog. Oh yeah, because your oil pump's not driven by a chain. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you're good. You're good. These are boss. Is that what they, they say boss on that too? GT350, holy shit. So GT350, timing chains, nice upgrade, Ford performance. I Let's think the go. I think the intake Let's phasers go. are also from GT350. All right guys, that wrapped up all the maintenance things, but I snuck back here. And there is, hey, 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 there hey, is hey. a couple parts hey, back there. Hey, what? There's a couple boxes. No, there's nothing Big left. Big boxes back there. We got through it. All right, all right, all right. I said maintenance and fuel economy, fuel, fuel efficiency. Fuel efficiency so parts. the injectors, fuel. IDs are known to be efficient. They're, yeah, sure. They have really good spray pattern. So here we go. All right. All right, what, do, right. You all what right. do you got? What do you got? So I got this right here. It's Look been sitting like in the barn for a while, so we got a, a new intake manifold. Boss 302 intake manifold. Yeah. Jesus, that thing is tall. It is quite and quite it large. Fits? It sure does. Oh wow. There's plenty of room in there. Plenty of room for a cool uh, engine plug. And then pick it. Pick a number between one and two. Four. Four is my favorite number. Half that is two. Two. Oh. <laughs> oh. I said. Fuel efficiency, oh, and there's no. nothing more fuel efficient. Is it is it really two or is it one? Is it one turbo? That is a that is a turbo. Is it twin turbo or single turbo? Well, that is a turbo. That pick, is a single. Pick turbo. a number okay. between uh, one and two. Four. Holy. Shit. So two turbos. We got two turb skis. All right. Is there another one back there? <laughs> <laughs> it is not a, a triple turbo kit, but it is a twin turbo kit by on three performance and uh, i live at 10,000 feet of elevation and i drive over vale pass every day which is at like 12.5 so being na just you isn't need some you need some room to breathe i need some room to breathe help me now because mate uh, you know a week of maintenance just turned into a twin turbo build for this truck well the good news is it comes as a as a kit so oh yeah that looks like a like a movie that, that bad there. Thing, so. yeah so there's there's one what does this say oh the af the air filters are missing so reading that we're missing some air filters but that's okay and just one more giant box giant leap for phil fuel efficiency huge inconvenience for me but how exciting though this is the forerunner all over again i and like to let do me it. guess the second it's done, you gotta go to Colorado. Uh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> yep. Yeah, yep. so we'll just build this whole truck, you know, no test drives, whatever. Phil's just gonna back it out and drive it to Colorado. Cause that's how we did the 4Runner like four years ago. We did Supercharger, Toyota 4Runner 2017? 16. 2016 Toyota 4Runner V6. TRD Pro. TRD Pro, awesome truck. We did a lift kit, we did tires, wheels, brakes, big brake kit, long tube headers, Magnuson supercharger, big radiator, intercoolers, super flow pump, uh, standalone ECU, standalone e tuning tube ECU, headers, long tube headers, high flow cats. I mean, that thing, we was, did bumpers. 
Uh, he did mostly the, the cosmetics, but there's we did huge bumpers on it. It, it was the coolest 4Runner ever. Started it up, we worked through the night, the last night to get it running, started up 4 a.m. And then me and him drove to Colorado, not a check engine light, not a nothing, straight through. Yeah. It was, it was insane. And I'm guessing that's how we're doing this one. Oh yeah, I like to do everything at once. There's no, uh, you know, I don't want to piecemeal it. Rather just drive all to out. drive all the way to Virginia, 27 hours, drop it off, leave you here by yourself for a couple weeks while I go and visit Travel Europe. the world. <laughs> and then come back, pick it up, and uh, it's done. Yeah, and then we'll drive it to Colorado. Yeah, uh, so. Because I want to check out the game store, so. But I told you fuel trip. efficiency. That should help a little bit. This. Especially at 12,000 feet. These bad boys are gonna scream. Yes, sir. So, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm only really going for like, let's leave it at like 600, 650. I think, I think that's easily doable. One, yeah. it'd be like wastegate. Two, the fuel mileage will increase. Oh yeah. Especially with those tires and everything. And like. I cannot wait to have a tuned TCU because it drives me crazy. Anything else? Any other things? That, that's it. Okay, because that's too much, but. Yeah, that's, I don't have any other split. parts for it. I gotta you. take care of Phil. Uh, me and Phil have had an awesome relationship the last 15 years. Uh, we used to build 3000 GTs together back in the day. Uh, then he started Victor Road Performance. He got me into AMGs. So I owe a lot to Phil and VRP for everything they've done for us. All the prototyping they let us do and everything we've done for them. It's just been a great relationship. So I hope you're excited for this Coyote. I am too and he's a dear friend of mine. And I hope you enjoy Greece and Athens and wherever this going i hope you enjoy oh yeah i'll be checking in that's for <laughs> sure yeah all right guys we'll see you in the next scene all right guys so a little update on the exterior of the truck they got the passenger side fender off the hood and the two headlight bezels and i dropped those off at the uh the paint shop this morning so they're gonna refiberglass those do some repairs the passenger side fender had that that uh tear in it and they're gonna get those painted up that way Craig can have someone go down and grab them once they're done and put everything back together. So the grill still needs to be changed. As you can see here, the flappers are broken on the grill. So they're going to remove all of this stuff when they do the engine work. And they will, instead of putting those parts back on, they're just gonna put the new ones that, that, that just came in. Um, but you know, these, this thing kind of looks pretty mean even with the parts off of it. Uh, kind of attempted to build like a skeleton truck, but now that all of the deer dookie is gone, you can see that it did a little bit of damage. So a new door is here, and we'll be getting that on today just so it doesn't get dinged up or anything like that. But um, yeah, there we are. So if you can imagine, one turbo sits here, one turbo sits here, and the boss intake manifold right there in the middle. That's gonna look pretty sweet. All right guys, and here is the Fractor Phil's Raptor swapped F-150 that the deer hit the door. You can, with the deer off of it, you can totally see the dent in it now. We have a new door placed over there. And Joey is in here removing the exhaust manifolds so we can fit a twin turbo kit in this. And look at this, he did the upper control arms, did an alignment. We did all the other suspension stuff. And Joey has the valve covers off and he has all the timing exposed because we are doing new oil pump, new timing chains, new phasers. And it looks like someone needs to start doing oil flushes because that is dirty. I don't like that color. Phil, you know better than that. So you better start doing liquid molly and liquid molly oil flushes every oil change. All right guys, busy day here at Modern Masters Auto. Just got back from Florida and Joey over the weekend has been doing this on the side for us. But check this out. This is the Raptor F-150 that you know we've been showing you. That Phil dropped off and you know I thought he was doing maintenance stuff like the timing chains and the, the tensioners but there's two turbos in here so I guess we're building a Raptor with two T's F-150 uh, new oil pump Joey has to drill the oil pan for the turbos we did new cam phasers and yeah there's a lot going on here and there's even more going on over here we get the boss intake, which I gotta call them because the intercooler piping set up for the stock intake manifold and this changes the angle. So we gotta call them about that. And then our old oil pump and actuators, new water pump, new cam magnets, 
for actuation. And then we have a box of exhaust that somehow fits in there too. But yeah, this truck is pretty serious. It is about to kick some ass on the road. Joey took off the old door that was messed up. The new door is put on. Do we finish the inside? I gotta move it off the lift door to open it all the way. Oh, okay. But yeah, new door is mounted and on there looking good. So that looks great. Old doors off. Look at the turbo manifolds on there. We had to get our own hardware uh, because the hardware they supplied was too short. Overall, the kit is nice, but we're missing odds and ends things. I've been on the phone with them. Phil's been on the phone with them, but otherwise it is a beautiful kit. We're waiting for Greg to give us a call back because we're missing an oil fitting and we got to talk to him about the, the new intake manifold. So stay tuned. I'll try to keep you guys updated. Uh, this is not going to be a DIY video. This is going to be more of like, you know, show you the progress and then we're going to take it for a rip. So but very cool setup lot going on all right guys and joey wanted me to note this yeah this is the first page of the instructions and it says this system is designed for racing or off-road applications only so yes we are building a race truck look at this rear setup he has on here it's a full tent setup a canopy all a storage look at that Sweet Raptor rear diff with the diff cover. Full Raptor suspension. I mean, this thing is just massive and awesome. We gotta drop the tank eventually to put in the new pump, but yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back. Another day, another missed dollar because <laughs> the ON3 performance kit likes to be like some other kits with some other companies we've worked with that you know it's it's 95 percent there and 95 percent fits and you know their thing is well it fits in 18 because of this and that's what it's made for and this just happens to be a 17 but let's send them the 18 kit and it fits <laughs> rusty how you doing on this well i think they should rename it to on please <laughs> that is good on please we will take it look at that so this is a raptor trans cooler we're going to get away with using the plate chiller for the cooling and we're going to put in this raptor transmission cooler so we'll go through the radiator and the additional cooler and then look at these big beautiful dual ball bearing turbos you know what else is dual ball bearing me me man this is what i do And then, on top of that, of course, Phil didn't tell us, oh, well, this kit, you know, fits the 17 or 18 or whatever the hell. But since we have Raptor suspension in here, it's completely different, and none of this fits, so we had to shove 10 pounds of in a 5-pound area. And look at, look at that. Joey had to do some custom peening on the wastegate tube. You can almost slide a credit card through it. Not quite. We're gonna have to modify that some more, but we're getting there. Uh, these coolant hoses for the heater core, they are fitting lovely. I guess we just throw them on top of the top of the turbo here. We're doing the delete. Oh, we're just gonna do the heater core delete. We should do that and not tell him. He only lives in Colorado. That's what I'm saying. We should do it and not tell him. But yeah, bro, it's all good. He's, and he's enjoying his AC on the way back. And then this winter, he's like, calls me, F you, Craig, F you. That would be, oh my God, that would be the best prank ever because Colorado where he lives the elevation it snows like 70% time of the year so that would be hilarious if he had no heat but I do love how the kit looks and it's gonna make a ton of power we just got to modify it a little bit get it to fit the boss 302 intake is on there throttle bodies there we're gonna have to maneuver the pipe a little bit cut and weld because it was set up for the stock intake manifold so we're gonna have to modify that because it's a different angle the stock one shoots the throttle body upwards this one shoots the throttle blade downwards, so we're gonna have to change the orientation of this and get it welded up, which should not be a problem. -oh. And yeah, oil catch can mounted up there. The This bolt on oil catch can also didn't bolt on. Joey had to drill the hole out bigger so it could fit where they told us to put it. So it's awesome. We love all this stuff. It's going, it's going, it's going. And if anybody wonders why, oh, you know, hey guys, why does, this take longer why does that take you know every time 
something doesn't fit right, every time something's missing, that puts us back. And if that puts us back on that project, that puts us back on the project before. And how you can't account for that. You can only apologize so much. And it's just the nature of the beast. If you're getting aftermarket stuff done and it's, you know, not a 100% direct bolt on OEM thing, plan for things to happen out of, unseen from everybody. Plan for finding weak or broken OEM stuff while you're in there. As you guys see, like all the legit street cars video, I think Alex has to do a while you're in there thing and every car he does, when he does not plan it, just like us, it happens to all our customer cars, it happens to our personal cars, it happens to damn near everything in my life, man. I'm always doing more than I, I thought I would ever have to do because of this, that, and the third, so. Name of the game, isn't that right, Rusty? That's right. But keep on keeping on, right? Uh, for now, yeah. What the hell is that supposed to mean? I'm, I'm just not getting back in the swing of things. I'm, I know. How was your vacation? It was very good. Did your daughter have a fun? Yeah, until she had to be able to call an ambulance for her. Oh, yeah. What happened with that? Stung by a wasp. 19 month old, stung by a wasp. Had Hulk hands in like 30 seconds. Well, did they have like a safety place uh, to take her? No, they just said call the hospital. Call the hospital. We'll call where them, where call were them. you? Mass and Nutton, like a golf resort, family resort. Mass and Nutton. And no emergency paramedics, nothing. Uh, uh, they had security guards come make sure that no one was trying to rob us while we were the ambulance was coming on the way. Yeah. Wow, that's convenient. Yeah. Super convenient. But they did point out all the wasp nests. That was nice. Oh, so they showed you after the fact yeah, yeah, that don't, Yeah, don't get near that one. Yeah. We're not going to do anything about so it. So they knew there was wasp nests and not taking care of it. They know now. Wow, wonderful, wonderful. Well, I'm glad she's okay now, and I'm glad you're back. I missed you, although I left also. <laughs> so, yeah, we had a good trip and enjoyed our families for a couple days. It was nice, and yeah. Of course, we had s some clients complain about that also, and that's how that goes. Uh, God forbid anybody get to spend time with their family with their 17th car not completely done yet. So... Yeah, good times. All right, guys, so not only did Joey throw on the new door, Joey also took care of the rear brakes while we were gone. Throw on this awesome rear diff cover, Ford Performance Raptor diff cover. Raptor suspension we did years ago, Raptor leaf springs, everything looking good. The new fender will be here tomorrow in the hood. So glad to have those back. I'll show you Joey throwing those on. And hopefully they can get these intercooler pipes lined up after they do the trans cooler. All right, guys, we are going to pull the stock file off with HP tuners, and then we're gonna send it out to the tuner, and we are going to get an updated tune, a base tune for the twin turbo setup, and then we'll make some revisions. I doubt we're gonna dyno it this time because Phil's impatient, so we're probably going to flash a base tune on it, drive it down the road, and then flash an updated tune so it's like more street drivable. And it feels taking it, uh, you know, 24 hours straight to Colorado because he is, you know, you think our my MG clients are impatient. He is the worst. Love him to death, but yeah. So you'll take your HP tuners, you'll plug it in, key on on. Make sure you have a battery tender on the battery. And then you'll pull the stock file. It takes roughly two to five minutes, I'm usually quicker. And then once you have that, you can send it off to your tuner. And we use HP tuners for all American and some European stuff. I've tuned my E63 on HP tuners as well. So it's a good product, great company, and it damn near works with everything. We've tuned uh, Hellcat swap chargers and stuff with it. We've even tuned a 5.7 Hemi with a Hellcat blower on it with HP tuners and the thing rips. So can do a lot with this. All right, guys, as the Fraptor is coming to a close, we have one major thing left to do, and that is go through this box. And it looks like we have some kind of wiring harness and relay box here, fuel hose. Looks like we are doing, again, this was not brought up to me that we were doing this, but we have a, looks to be a badass fuel pump setup. I think that's twin GT350 pumps because the blue tops look familiar on those. I'm pretty sure that's twin GT350 pumps wide into a factory bucket. And we have a bunch of 8AN, or is that 10AN? 10AN fuel set up here, let's see. Oh, it is 8AN, yeah. So we have the ON3 F-150 system, 8AN return line, ON3 pressure regulator with gauge, ON3 Coyote fuel rails. 
Oh, damn it. We just... Joey is going to be pissed. We just... We literally did all that with the boss intake and this, we made the factory fuel rail fit. Ah, he's going to love that. Uh, looks like a hob switch for boost. What do we got in there? Oh, gauge for the fuel pressure regulator. I bet you that's what this is. And we have a fuel pressure regulator. All right, so it looks like it uses the stock feed, I'm guessing, and then a return. So, wonderful. What's in this? Oh, the relays and fuses for the pumps. Nice, nice, nice. Prayers to us. Let's get the tank drop first and get this going. It looks like this is where the return is gonna go. So let's throw this in and get her done. All right, guys, gonna give you a under view. Uh, there's the intercooler piping. Looking good, coming down and going up and around. Blow off valve. Intercooler piping on this side. <clears throat> looks like that clamp's gonna need tightened a little more. Looking good, up and around. Looking good in there. Down pipes and wastegate coming down. Wastegate dump and exhaust dump over here. Then it goes back into these and you can put cutouts right here if you like. And then it goes to the exhaust all the way back into the dual exhaust back there. It's the Borla exhaust. Looking good. So now we're about to drop the tank so we can put in the new fuel pump. Guys, Joey has the module installed into the fuel tank. We have our fitting here ready for the return line. And I went ahead and added our PTFE fitting to the back of the return line here. And we routed that the whole way up alongside of the factory fuel lines. And I was able to take advantage of the factory clip there. It had a extra spot in it already. And we just ran it up on top of the transmission like so. And we're just going to secure those after we get the entire line made. That way it makes it easier for me to get stretched into place. So final touches will be securing that line to the other lines up top there. But very, very clean setup. So let's keep going. So we have the harness here ran for the fuel pumps. And I went ahead and uh, wired in the trigger wires using the diagram that they sent with us. That runs off the factory trigger and the level sender. And it will go into this harness here. And then it runs around the frame rail here two and relay box that we will mount here to the frame once we get the fuel tank back in and these power wires run the whole way up and they plug into the back of the alternator um, so i'm gonna mess with that one once we get the truck back down the ground but for right now we are going to get the fuel tank back up in okay we just gotta put this tank back up in here hook our harness to the new module here and uh, hook all the factory stuff back up and we'll secure this return line All right, so fuel tank is up and in. We have all the factory lines connected because this kit does still use the factory pressure line. We're just adding the return, which I need to secure up here a little better now that the tank is in. I didn't want to cut it too short, but everything is in there. And now I can finish mounting and wiring this relay box here and run these up to alternator. I think I have two grounds over there somewhere. I got to ground, but pretty straightforward. 
All right, guys, we are making some really good progress on the Fraptor. Got the front grill put in, all the lights, everything work, new fender, all that good stuff. And we started running the catch can and all of the vacuum to the wastegates. I can't finalize everything until I get the intake on there. And I'm in the process of making the fuel system. So this is pretty time consuming PTFE. And I have a little bit of a problem over here with some clearance issues with the heater hose that goes on the passenger cylinder head. But I think I should be able to squeeze by with this little fitting here and just shoot my regulator back underneath the intake. That's the plan anyway. It could change. I'm trying to get everything test fitted before I make too many more permanent cuts. But this is looking pretty good so far. And Joey actually came in today, even though he was scheduled to be off today, but he wanted to make sure we got this Raptor done as much as possible. So I definitely appreciate that. But it's turning out awesome. I have the power lines that run to that fuse block for the fuel pump back here. They're not secured or out of the way yet, but they run down to the alternator. I'm not sure if you can see it, but they get powered by the alternator, run back. I just got to tuck them out of the way, get a little bit of heat shielding behind that strut tower just to make sure it doesn't get melted by the exhaust. These run back to the back of the car. Again, it's not nothing secured yet, nothing's final. It's just making sure everything's gonna reach, but definitely coming together. I think we're just waiting on the tune now. I have to make a pipe. It's long enough to go from the intercooler to the intake because we are running the Boss 302 intake which is, sits much higher than the factory intake. So we're running into a couple of fitment issues here and there, which is also why I'm having problems with these supplied fuel rails because they are not made for this intake manifold. They're made for the factory F-150 manifold. So definitely a couple of little challenges to overcome. Hopefully I can get that fuel line to clear this pipe here. That's what I was having a problem with. And I'm worried if I bend that, it's gonna crack and then we're really in trouble. So yeah, but all is well looking good. We are now topping off the coolant. We got the filters on the turbos. Something is leaking coolant. It is the overflow on the reservoir. I guess that thing's not blocking that overflow. Yeah. We just have to put a bolt in there and plug it. We'll grab a bolt. Like a M10? Yeah, something like that, yeah. M10 and a zip tie. M10 and a zip tie. We will, let me show that, Rusty. Uh, usually these adapters block the reservoir from leaking, but it is, all right, you can close it. We get the idea, but it is not. So we're gonna have to plug that for a second. And then we can continue to check this bad boy out and prep it yeah. for first startup. They got all the vacuum lines in the vacuum block done under there, if you can see it. Looking good, the vacuum block and all the vacuum lines. Everything ran to the wastegates. And speaking of the vacuum lines, we have the catch can done, ran to the intake manifold and crankcase. But, but if you follow me over here, look at this awesome instructions graphic that is given out with this kit. I mean, that is so detailed. So you'll go to vacuum block to, that's the intake sun over there. And then these bubbles down here are the certain things. Very nice. Just super detailed. Thanks to On3 Performance. Love it. Love the Fractor. About to do first startup. I just tuned it with HP tuners. The app on my phone. Shoemaker Performance is tuning this. I'm going to have Joey pull this injector fuse so I can crank everything, get oil circulated through the turbos and everything prior to first start up with all the new tensioners and oil chain, all that stuff. I want everything lubricated before it starts up. All right, Rusty, without further ado. All right, that should be good. All right, Rusty. So we did that, we checked the oil, we cranked it. Uh, we have coolant that needs topped off. It's just very at the bottom at the thing. So not a huge deal because the reservoir is full, that's full. I think it's time to fire it up. What do you think? All right, about to hear this bad boy hum. He's gonna plug the ECU back in. And then it's time to fire up the engine. America. Go ahead. We got fuel pressure. Go again.
All right, guys, we figured out the crank no start. It was the difference between the factory map sensor and a three bar map sensor. So we are putting in the three bar map sensor. I'll put the link down below. And that's what this vehicle is tuned for. Once we swap that at a fire rate up, we can get it up to temp and then we should be able to log it, go down the road even, throw a hood on it and continue to get this thing ready for Colorado. All right guys, we got it running. The new steering wheel is in. I'm about to log it. Check engine light is on for the rear O2s, so we'll uh, resolve that with tuning, but we're about to shoot it down the road and get this going. All right guys, she is running good. We just drove it, just did a quick log for the tuner. Got the hood back on it, the fender. Looking good, looking good. You can hear the fans screaming because it is hot out. But she is looking good. I gotta say, this thing looks mean coming down the road. That is awesome. Look at that, guys. Just look how close it is. Right. It is okay, right on, on the money. L literally perfect. Yeah. Alright guys, so we are stuck on the dyno. We have tried to drive it with the base tune. It breaks up like 4,000-ish RPMs, a let off. It did make an astonishing 320 horsepower at 4,000 something RPM with it not running perfectly. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good, I gotta say. Especially with 410 gears. Didn't even really get to send the turbos into too much of a spoolie land. Although I'm thinking it's running 15 pounds of boost because Rusty said we're at 60 PSI fuel pressure at idle. And then when we get into boost, it gets up to 75, you said? Yeah. 75 PSI, so that should be about 15 pounds of boost. Hopefully not more because, yeah, that's not good. But yeah, I think we're around 15 pounds of boost, which is awesome. There should be plenty to make some beans. We're waiting for the tune file. It's like 120 degrees in here. It smells like wet dog because Phil travels with this thing, camps with it. The dog lives in here. The dog likes to play in water. I'm now sweaty and hot and soaked, so I am just very uncomfortable. Please send. I'm thirsty. I'm hot. And the reason why Craig can't get off the ride is there's a pole in the way. There is a pole. So in the way, a laptop on the other side. All hands and feet are remaining inside the vehicle until further notice. All right guys, just in time, we got the updated tune file. We're putting it on, 20 seconds left to right. So I've only been in the sitting in here waiting for an hour or two. I, don't, I lost track of time, but it's kind of like a sauna in here. So I'm gonna enjoy losing the weight and you know, sweating out the toxins. And boom, 100%. So we are good to go. Let's see if this thing will do a pull in the dyno. looking at the log here and that was revision four and it's looking like it's looking like a really weird things going on it's like not like the throttle body is like closing in the log to me as the rpm increases the throttle the throttle position sensor shows 40 percent instead of the 86 percent when it's mashed 89 86 so that's weird, but it's still smoking up top. That revision started misfiring. Random cylinder misfire, no, nothing on any cylinder. And then obviously you turn off the rag on, it clears up and it's 
stops misfiring. So something's going on up top. I'm not sure. The log is very detailed. So everything is looking okay. It's looking like air to fuel at the very peak of the run was 11.3. A little bit into the 12s when it started climbing. Phil's calling me. I'll take this. All right, guys, that wraps up the dyno day. We're finished the tune revision for a lot better. Still needs more tuning. Phil is suggesting I drive to Colorado with him to do the tuning. I don't know if I can do that, but I will teach him how. But Rusty is going to back it off the dyno, and then this bad boy will be ready for Phil. It drives perfect. Just that little bit of if you go all the way to red line, there's a hiccup error which the tuner needs to resolve. But everything else, perfect, made decent power. Put, putting down, you know, closer to 500 wheel and wastegate. Let's go home. So, so what's your first impressions of it visually? It looks insane. It does look insane. Yeah, Are looks, you happy with it? I'm happy with the way it looks, a thousand percent. Cool, cool. And cool. I understand this is quite a bit of work. It, it was a lot of work. Yeah. But I gotta say, we gotta give it to Joey. Joey did 70%, if not more of this. He did a phenomenal job. Rusty was on vacation, so that was good. Rusty's back fresh, came back with a clear mind, diagnosed like three things right away that he was stuck on before without him without even thinking twice just because he got some r and r phil got some r and r i heard that he was lighting up tinder internationally so uh shout out to phil's tinder dates that were all throughout the world that's I was, it was awesome to hear about and this thing really just impressive i mean I, i'm not happy we spent so much time on it at the shop but i'm super happy with the turnout it is an incredible vehicle it's fun to drive and it drives really smooth. I've driven tons of Raptors. They drive like <laughs> This truck drives phenomenal. I love it. It's wider, it's cooler, and it has a Coyote, twin turbo Coyote. So from all of us here at Modern Masters, we'll see you on the next one. You're going with me, dude. It's not finished tuning. I'm picking you up. <laughs> I'm not going. Yes, you All right, guys, we're done with the Raptor. It's out of here. It's leaving. It runs good enough. I'm not, not tuning, tuning it. I'm yet. not so, doing it. So I'm, le I'm leaving it. He can take it to Colorado. Sayonara. We have AMGs to get back to. So, without further ado, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Share with your friends. And subscribe. And most importantly, leave a comment about Phil and how he screws us on every build in the comments. Have a good day. You really f***ing arm up, took us to sit Yo, look at that. Look at yeah. Rusty's arm. That's dedication right there. Yeah. Look at look at that. Look at that. <laughs> no more, not a scratch on him. Now it's recording. I said, is it recording? You said no. And then I started talking, and then you pressed the record button. No, you said yes. Well, anyway, testing, testing, audio visual knockoff Gatorade from Sam's Club. We're doing the thing. Happy 4th of July. Happy 4th of July. Testing beep by both thumb. We did all the other suspension stuff. Carter, can you cut it out? I'm trying to record here. So that would be hilarious if you had no heat. Yeah, John, just keep making all the noise you want while I'm recording. Tell you these guys. Go on your side. Scram. Here's Rachel. Oh, come on. She I, she loves being in the videos. I love being up here really so much. Let's go see my truck.